Okay, thank you very much, Nigel. Nigel. Now, um, first of all, I have to apologise, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so I'm sounding a bit more husky than usual. Um, so hopefully you can still hear me okay. So, um, quick overview of um, the software. Uh, we have three um, th th three software choices when it comes to the um, concrete design. ADC and ADSEC, which are standalone um, concrete um, analysis and design tools, and then there's, and there's, and there's um, GSA, which is our finite element anal analysis program, which has some concrete design capabilities w within it. I'm going to quickly r r run you through the um, w what e each of the three programs does and, and the differences b between them. Okay, now let's start with ADC. ADC is possibly the simplest of our concrete programs, and um, it essentially is is very much a concrete design tool. Um, in in that you give um, ADC your loads and your geometry, it will give you the rebar, which you'll see is is slight slight contrast at ad sec. But I shall come back to that. Um, we have a, a range of um, design codes, um, British, um, Hong Kong, and, and European. I'll be concentrating on the European today, of course. You'll note that um, we have columns, beams, and slab design within ADC. Um, with the Euro codes, the um, slab design is not available at the moment. That that will be coming coming shortly. Um, in terms of the demonstration, the slabs and the beams are very similar in principle. Multi spans, um, just slightly different support c conditions. So let's start off off with with, with a beam design. Now um, the, the beams here. This is a, um, a a subframe analysis. So obviously we could do a, um, a four stage multi span beam. And this stage uh, we we just have a constant span span length. We'll, we can vary these later. We have a number of um, different sections available rectangular obviously and various T section I'll go for a taper T to keep things interesting and we give it the properties our supports at the extreme ends can be um, columns or simple supports so let's go for a free or cantilever at one end and just make it um, Fixed to the other for the moment. Um, we have, let's say, we can include columns um, above and below. After this is, um, say, let's say, a, a ground beam for, for a uh, um, for foundation. We just have lower columns or a roof, but we have upper and lower columns. Let's put in some, let's say, some circular, and the stiffness of these will affect the design on the. Uh, of the beams, we can copy that down and make them the same, or or adjust the upper ones to suit. Um, we have some few special settings under this spe general specification. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Important ones like frames providing lateral stability, um, redistribution options, some code specific um, settings, and, and so on. Materials of the effect of the design and the analysis. Loadings again. These are just general loadings, but we can um, um, adjust these on a span by span basis. Afterwards, including um, point and patch loads and so on. Okay. Can again include redistribution cover. Very important. Um, we can type the cover in manually, or we now have a cover code calculator so you can accept, um, select the, um, the exposure class um, and it, it will work out the, the, the cover for you sizes and limits because uh, ADC is choosing the reinforcement for you um, y um, you need to tell ADC w w which bars it can take so first of all that these are the list of of bar sizes, um, 
and then we actually specify exactly where the particular bars might be used so links between 10 and 16 but for main bars between 12s and 40s spacing making sure the, the poker access and so on um, and likewise selection criteria in this case is beam specific you, you, you note when we get to the columns that this dialog is quite different we'll have some trapezoidal um, links so there we have our geometry now that cantilever on the left hand end looks far too big so I'll open up the spans and just reduce that down something sensible likewise with notice we can also adjust the individual sections here which you can switch on the sections and likewise the support at the right hand end I think rather than fix I'll just make that uh, a simple support so we get no moment off it we have excuse me, the dimensions and we've got the loads at this stage we can analyze and then, uh, and then you can see the um, the, um, the you, you can see from the bending moment the diagram that it has taken taken the patch loads into account. We can also and um, design it now, and so get the the reinforcements, um, including the, the reinforcement on the particular span. If we just click zoom in. So you see we've got the main span and and the uh, and, and the continuity steelwork as well, which you can then print out um, and and detail up appropriate. <coughs> With the columns, um, again, um, they're very they're very simple and straightforward. But um, columns are just dealing with a single lift. Important difference. Now, with the columns, when you give it an axial load, ADC will automatically calculate the additional moments being caused by those, those axial loads, whether for the infection or second order effects. And let's give it a section which will be, I guess, I guess I say a circular, circular section. And there we have our um, effective lengths, which are. EC2 specific in this particular case, and we give it some axial force. Now you notice we've got a factor down here, one or whatever. Um, you can this this axial force can be an ultimate load or it can be a working load, which you can then factor as you prefer. Size and limits the same before arrangements because it's another column. Um, it's given choice of rings. If it was a square section, have a more choice of bar arrangements. Cover, similar again. <coughs> and the checks, a little bit more, more involved this time. Um, if you're finding that um, ADCs give you a, a arrangements you, range you don't like, you can, you can switch these um, checks on and off. At, as you feel appropriate. So w with these checks, ADC will work out which reinforcement combinations um, work in terms of de the detailing rules. And that's a the large possible number. There's about half a dozen sections which can be built. If we if we design these now, we see four have um, four are under under capacity. If we look at these in more detail, we can look at our results. Let me just switch off the input for a moment. We can see here for our, our, our column results, um, four are in red, which means they failed, um, three are in black, which means they work, and the one in blue, um, it works, and it has the lowest um, quantity of reinforcement used. That's section number 25. So obviously we can just print these out, um, but we can also 
get uh, our, our sort um, axial moment charts. You can see where loading come, and of course our moment moment charts. Now th th this is this is designed with just a single load case. Um, you can have um, <coughs> multiple load cases as well, all of which are designed to. So that's ADC. So, so um, sort of simple approach. Um, give the loads. It gives a rebar. Limited on on, on cross sections um, that you, you can work with. The other, um, the other option is ADSEC. Which is our nonlinear section analysis tool, where you tell it the section and the reinforcements, it gives you the capacity as well as um, some other checks. Far more um, code choices here, um, including American, Australian, um, European, Hong and Hong Kong, and Indian codes. You'll find that these codes will be working their way through to through to ADC shortly. So let's have the Euro code again. And this time we'll just go for um whilst well, we have quite a wide range of sections, I'll just go for a rectangular section. Um simple beam. Aggregate size, which can affect the cover and therefore the placement of the bars. And I have some template reinforcements which have a beam arrangement. Cover check again. Link diameter. So the um, ASEC doesn't do shear design or analysis. These links are there to position the main reinforcements and include some bars at the top. And the bottom. And because it's 600 deep, I'll, I'll include the sidebar. There are arrangements. We can also, also add in. Uh, Manual bars as well, um, are these single lines and so on to, to to our choice. So there is our section. And you know, because we have sidebars, they are there, and, and therefore ADSEC will take them into account with, with the capacity. So if we look now, the capacity checks are numerous. So we've got the axial moment chart, asymmetric this time because it's a it's a beam arrangement. You see, we've got a moment capacity of about 450 kilometers. meters. If it was a column, <coughs> our moment moment charts. Of course, this moment moment charts could be um, with an over range of axial loads and the moments that it can carry. But also, a moment curvature. The moment curvature. Um, Gives us the the stiffness value of the cracked concrete section um, up here, and the moment applied to, to the section for a range of different axial loads. And you can see, um, as the moment increases, the concrete cracks at this point um, until it's 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 fully cracked, and then the steel gradually yields until for failure. Now you can use this EI value and pass it into um, GSA for more accurate uh, concrete deflections. So um, now ASEC that does more, more, more than just, just give you general capacities. If you give it the loads itself it will tell you how well it's doing. So being EC2 rather than dead loads permanent and dead and live loads as I like to think um, or permanent and variable actions as we should be calling them now I suppose and give it some loadings Let's say, uh, and locate two um, the live loads now these it can be section forces force on the whole section or it can be more d detailed forces so let's do let's look at the beam under ultimate limit condition first of all so 1.35 locus 1 plus 1.5 oops locus 2 <coughs> Sorry. so we can check this section 
under the, under the, um, the given loads and because it's giving us stresses and strains on the section we know that that the section has worked if we go back to our cross section there's our neutral axis and we can call up um, stresses and, and strains are on the sections appropriate similarly if we go serviceability limit state um, we can calculate serviceability limit um, stresses now um, it's saying cracking here now this is EC2 EC2 only actually allows cracking under a very limited number of, of, of conditions so if, if you're you um, if, you, if you're using the current version of, of ADSEC what we recommend you do is actually just change it over to um, 8110 because um, the material grades are, 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 are all the same we can rerun the serviceability limit state case and we can see we now have actual cracking values and you can see um, the cracking on the section rebar governing the cracking and the worst and, and, and the point of maximum cracking uh, we're working on the new version of ADSEC which um, is, is, a, is aiming to get around some of the EC2 cracking limitations so you we will be getting crack values um, under Eurocode calculations that's due out in a couple of months time so keep an eye out for that um, also um, now that, that, that's a simple section in ADSEC let me just close up some of these windows um, you can also do some much more complicated things obviously you can do uh, composite um, sections but let's um, let's call up um, a section where well of the, the standard sections but with the, with the perimeter section you can define um, your own section or it could be a bridge beam um, or in this case it could be a um, a core wall and, and let's translate work out where the central intersection is from there. now with something like um, a core wall it can be quite difficult to work out this capacity except with ADSEC now um, we want reinforcement in here and there's a new tool in, in ADSEC calling add perimeter bars and let's add in our cover again um, it's asking for links now these links could be links or they could be the horizontal bars on the on the cage so let's put some 16s horizontally on the outside and then some 25s vertically at our centers and you see um, ASEC takes the um, the perimeter of these other section and works out where all the bars go we should be quite um, tricky to do that by hand and then of course you can work out the capacities and so on as before so, so that's <coughs> so that's ADSEC and ADC standalone components standalone programs whereas we also have GSA So let's this up. Now, um, we, we can use GSA for um, the analysis of the design of, of, of slabs and walls. Now, um, to save time, uh, I've got a model that I created earlier, which is a flat slab model, a little simple little, um, simple model. And for, for the column arrangements, if I just zoom in here, um, you see I've actually got um where the column comes through the slab I've, I've built the the column perimeter into the slab and then added in rigid links to, to, to avoid those um those unrealistic peak moments you, you can get over the um sort of essentially it's a point support whereas in reality it's it's a 400 diameter column or whatever i've already included in this model um permanent and variable action or dead and live loads um, now this includes um, a line load around the outside for cladding 
and because it's a nice straightforward structure we can just do a linear analysis on this which of course then gives us um, our deflections and moments and so on but uh, um, because we've got dead and live loads we want to combine these together so if I go down to my combination cases I shall do some combinations uh, so that's 1.1 um, now ideal worlds would have patch loading in here as well um, as you might imagine um, pa patch pa I mean patch loading for if we had a completely regular array of columns it'd be quite straightforward to do checkerboarding we haven't got a fully um, arranged array so it, it's something you need to, to work out um, how, you, how you want to do the patch loading but what we'll do is the various um, loading combinations and then I shall do um, Nigel told me, told me off yesterday for spelling an envelope wrong. Uh, yeah, got it right for a change. Let me just envelope those um, four combination cases. So we can now see we've got. If I switch on the moment display, let's say uh, maximum moments, for example. Um, so maximum moments. And or we can look at the projected moments in particular directions. Obviously, there's the, again, the x, y, the other direction, um, torsional moments, and the combined torsion moments, the Wood Alma moments. Now, <coughs> um, when we do the slab design with um, GSA. GSA will be taking into account all the moments, all the torsions and all the in-plane forces at, as well in, in, in the design so, so nothing will get, get, get left out. So let's set up design. First of all I need to specify my design code which I'll set as EC2 again and then under my properties Design properties, slab properties. Now, um, each each line in this slab property table matches up with each line in the 2D element properties. So, if you have multiple 2D element properties, you need to make sure that these line these lines match number to number. Run the wizard and choose my concrete grades, steel grades, reinforcement. Um, this is relative to the local x-axis of the elements, in the case north and 90. Now, rather than cover, um, GSA is looking at surface to centroid of reinforcement um, for the dimensions. Um, GSA doesn't know what bars it's dealing with, it's giving you cross-sectional area per, per meter width or whatever. And then, and then letting you choose which, which bars you actually use. We can also include minimum areas of reinforcement. I'll leave these um, blank for the moment. And we can also, if we choose to, override the analysis thickness. What this means is that when we've got the design, if the reinforcement is a bit high or a bit low, we can change the design thickness of the slab without reanalyzing. And once we have um, an material or reinforcement arrangement that we like we can then upgrade the um, we'll delete the analysis results upgrade the analysis the slab thickness and reanalyze and redesign just for the final check to get the, the, the reinforcement design out what we need to do is go to the contours and see so we've now got RC slab reinforcement at the bottom and it's picking up this load case so let's say take um, bottom reinforcement and when I hit apply at this point um, it will um, do the calculation of the design so this will take just a moment and 
talk amongst ourselves. Um, I've just noticed, well, while that's thinking about it, I've noticed we had a couple of questions come in. Um, a couple of questions on, oh, one on AdSec and one on ADC. Okay. Um, okay. Quick one on ads. Um, tell. As it's finished now, I, I, I shall come back back, back to the, 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 those questions at the end. Simon, if that's okay. Right. Um. Okay. Let me enforce some arrangements. Generally quite boring. This slight um increase over this corner where we got the the edge. If we have the top uh, reinforcements, should be slightly quicker this time. And you notice also the uh, the contours that they've changed from just the standard values to um, a specified contour. The default is um, for the various bar sizes at the various spacings. Um, if you're using American codes, these would be the American record sizes um, uh, and so on, you can override these in the specify contour section. And we can see here we've got some patches where compression steel is beginning to be required because it's in the envelope, um, it's slightly patchy. But uh, the idea is you then print this out and you can rationalize it. And if we zoom in, we see we've got a sort of peaking of moments over the column. Um, the contours are getting a bit stepped around here, so I would say we probably need to uh, refine the mesh a little bit more uh, around these around these columns to get more more accurate detail. Beyond that, it looks um, quite adequate. Now, so to print this out, um, so say 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 you wouldn't detail this directly with these contours. Um, you can print these out, and if I say engineering scale, the print out. So then, see, it says uh, uh, 215. What's it talking about? Um, <coughs> or we can um, make it be easier to draw on. Oops, the wrong button. Um, change the contours to filled to um, lines, so, so it's easier to to scribble. You can also export these images to um, a JPEG for import into um, AutoCAD or your, your CAD program appropriate to backgrounds for um, detailing purposes. <laughs> 